This part is commonly known to and referred to as Kabbalat Ol Machut Shamayim. And I think it's very fitting, we're saying it finally, we're learning this part of the Selichot. Right before Rosh Hashanah, it comes up primarily on Yom Kippur, but the idea still stands for Rosh Hashanah as well. The, it begins with La Hashem Elokeinu Arachim Vaselichot, and we answer Ki Chatanu Lo. Basically, what we're saying is the Chazan is announcing, and we're, we're all saying to Hashem, our God, He's full of mercy and, and, and forgiveness. But what? Because we have sinned to Him. La Hashem Elokeinu Arachim Vaselichot to Hashem, our God, our mercy and our forgiveness. Why? Because we have rebelled against Him. So it's the introduction to this Kabbalat Omer Chodshemayim, where we're going to accept Hashem's throne and heavenly and heavenly yoke on us. We start off by saying that unfortunately we know He's our He's our God, but unfortunately we have sinned. And then we continue. Do not hold as a grievance against us that we've acted foolishly and that we've sinned. We're confessing that we sinned. And then people scream it, they yell it, they sing it with a lot of kavanah. We have sinned our rock. The rock is reference to Hashem, and we say it in Hazinu. The rock is Hashem. We have a sin or our rock. Forgive us, our Creator. Part of the process of Teshuvah, we're asking for Mechila, for Selicha. Then we go into Shema Yisrael. We don't have to explain that much longer. That's probably one of the most important psukim in our entire Torah, where we, I, we wholeheartedly confess that we believe in one Hashem, not God forbid no, and not God forbid many. There's one Hashem who's in charge of our lives, in charge of everything, and we yell that out loud. Then we progress into two, two times. We say, Adonai wa Elohim, Adonai wa Elohim. And I want to quickly reference a story from Tanakh as to what this is coming from. I'm sure everyone knows, but just to review, this Adonai wa Elohim, Adonai Elohim, originates from a story with Eliyahu Navi, where? Behara Carmel, the story of Mount, Mount Carmel, a really powerful and really, when you read it, the Psukim inside, life changing story. That what? Eliyahu Navi was, we don't have to give an introduction to who he is, Eliyahu Navi. He was prophesizing the time of a few of the, of the kings. This story takes place during the time of Ahab. He was not a favorable king. Unfortunately, he did not go on the path of Hashem. And during his reign, there was a lot of Avodah Zarah in Eretz Yisrael, in, in the land of Israel. And what happened? Eliyahu, Eliyahu actually disappears for some time. And they come back, a few of the younger prophets, searching for him, Ahab also. And it's a, it's a long back and forth where Ahab, uh, Eliyahu confronts Ahab. This is in Melachim Aleph, Perakut Chet. You can read it there at length. And Eliyahu and Ahab have a back and forth. And Eliyahu has a challenge towards the, ne- the Nevi'e Baal the prophets of the Baal, the Abu Dazara prophets, and he charges them, he, he makes a, a competition and says, if, let's have a competition. And we're, we're, can we, uh, Ahab sent among the children of Israel and gathered the prophets to Mount Carmel. Eliyahu approaches all the people and said, how long will it be that you dance between two opinions? If Hashem is the God, go after him. And if the Baal, go after it. And it's a powerful psukim. Vayomer ad matayetem posechim seifim. Eliyahu yells to the Nevi of Baal. The 450 fake prophets of Baal. They come and they have a challenge, a battle against Eliyahu and Navi. And then Eliyahu says, he continues and continues, We're going to have a, 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 a duel. We're going to go to Mount Carmel. And we're going to see which God answers us. We're going to build our Mizbeach. You will pray to your God. I'll pray to my Hashem. And we'll see who answers. And the way they had two bulls, let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it, put it on the wood, do not apply fire. I too will put the other wood and place it on, the, cut the bull, put it, place it on the wood, and no fire. So they're preparing two mizbeachs, no fire allowed. The, the, the contest is, you cry out to your God, I cry out to Hashem. Whichever God responds with fire, He's the true God. Powerful story. And all the people, the, the, the Nevi Baal, the 450 false prophets, Agree, this is good. And the story continues that the prophets start yelling and start crying and start doing their Avodah Zarah. And you see Eliyahu Anavi, I don't want to go through the whole prayer because it's so powerful. He's standing there on the side and he literally starts mocking them. He says, maybe scream louder. Maybe the, the, your God is in the bathroom. Maybe he can't hear, maybe he's asleep. And they start yelling, crying, and they start sacrificing more and more and all day long. The Nevi'e Baal, the, the false prophets of Baal, are crying out in tefillah, 
to no avail. There was no sound, the ain call, the ain one. There was no sound and no response to any of the quote unquote prayer of the false prophets. And then what happens? It was noontime. Eliyahu again ridicules them and he goes, cry out in a loud voice for he's your God. Maybe he's in a conversation. Maybe he can't be found. It's, it's, he's making fun of them and they cry longer. And then all of a sudden Eliyahu says, my turn. Late in the day, he draws people near him. All the people come close. He prepared the korban to Hashem and he does a procedure, takes 12 stones and the most and the powerful part where Eliyahu shows the entire Jewish nation that God is Hashem is the God. And what happens? He, he, he prays and he does his tefillah. And all of a sudden, esh Adonai et ha'ula vet ha'etzim vet ha'avanim vet ha'afar. A fire comes down from the sky and consumes Eliyahu's korban in front of everyone. And all of the Jewish people, the false prophets as well, recognize that Hashem is the king and Hashem runs the world. And what do they immediately all say? The entire nation sees and falls on their face. And what do they cry out? The entire nation are at this duel between who's the real God? Is it Hashem or is it the Baal? And they all see and they recognize that God is the king. And they cry out, And that's where we get it from. That's the story I highly recommend. Everyone looks at the 18th chapter of Melachim Aleph to see it more in detail. But that's in a nutshell. We're going to say it over and over next week. We're going to say it again on, on Yom Kippur. And really now we know where it comes from. And why it's so meaningful, why it's so powerful. And now with this kavana, if we can put ourselves in those shoes and have that same proclamation that God is King, how much more will our tefillot be accepted, B'zal Hashem. And we wish and pray that all of our tefillot are, are answered. Hashem should give us a chatimah tova and put us, seal us all in the book of light, health, Happiness, shalom, bayit, and unity. Have a wonderful day and have a wonderful year.